So this server rack battery from EcoWorthy has been one of the most popular budget batteries out there. It normally runs between around $850 to $1,000, somewhere in that price range. But EcoWorthy, I think, just made this server rack battery better, and it just came out with a new version. And here it is. So let's do a comparison between the old and the new, and let's see how this one ends up being better. So as we got these batteries side by side, even you guys probably noticed that the positive and the negative terminals, had, they've swapped positions. So that means the internals have changed. The batteries are probably laid out differently. It's probably wired up differently. So there's some changes to the inside. Now, the physical case itself, it's actually changed slightly too. It seems to be the same width and length, but it's just about a half inch higher than the old one. So you may notice that the, the breaker is different as well. It looks like a double pole breaker, but this is actually the breaker here. And then this is a shunt trip. So you guys might be asking, what is a shunt trip? Well, that allows the breaker to be tripped remotely or from the BMS, the battery management system. So we've seen this before in other server rack batteries. Um, for instance, ones that have a rapid shutdown. And if they shut the system down, the, the BMS will trip the breaker during that rapid shutdown. Now, I don't know how for sure this, the EcoWorthy is using the shunt trip, but it's definitely an added safety feature. So as we zoom in on the old battery, the breaker, this breaker is actually the same breaker. It just doesn't have the shunt trip. Now, another difference is this only has four dip switches and can only add a total of 15 additional batteries. So as we zoom in on the new battery, you can see that there's now six dip switches here. Now, I, I believe this will allow it to go up to a total of 32 batteries you can expand this to, which is like 163 kilowatt hours. It's a pretty big battery bank. And the battery terminals and the communication ports, they look like they're exactly the same as the old version. So that's all the differences that you can see from the outside. So let's go ahead, we'll open both of these up and see what they actually changed. Open up the old one. Open up the new one. So at first glance, they look really similar. The way the cells are arranged here and where the BMS is, it's the same on both sides. There's some subtle differences here. So as we look at the old battery, positive comes off in the same place. It has these flat bus bars here that are laser welded on. Each bus bar has a voltage reading for the BMS on it. And then there's four temperature sensors in here. Now, one thing that's different is these cell holders. These are only about a half inch tall. They push down and hold the batteries in place. So as we look in the new battery, you can see that the hold down is way thicker. It's, it's almost an inch, I say it's around an inch tall. That's why the case was taller. Now this gives it way more support holding down on the batteries. So the batteries are better held in. Bus bars are laser welded like before. A Little bit different design. They got a little expansion uh, loop in the middle. It, and then there is still four temperature sensors on the, on the batteries. Now on the side of the new batteries, you can see it has that plastic sheeting on there to, to protect it and keep it from touching metal. You look at the old battery, it's got a lot thinner film on the side of the battery that stickies to it. So definitely they've added some thicker protection around the battery cells. Now as far as the wiring in these, they seem to be wired up pretty much the same. It looks like they just swapped the positive and negative terminals. So the, the positive wire still goes through the breaker and then to the terminals, does that on both sides. And then the negative comes uh, through the BMS and then up to the negative terminal on both of these. So it seems to be wired the same, except they, they just moved the orientation to put the positive next to the breaker, which is actually more common uh, when you look at other server rack batteries. So the internal wiring for the negative and the positive wiring going to the breaker and the terminals, that seems to be the same size they used before. So on the BMS, there is another change. All of these connectors have RTV, like they have, they've been glued in place. So this connector is glued in place, that connector is glued in place, the ones down in the bottom are glued. And all the wiring going up to the, the front communication ports, the LEDs, 
the dip switches, they're all glued in place as well. And if you look at this old server rack battery, the, nothing's glued on the BMS. Doesn't really look like anything's glued on the front communication ports. Now that may seem like a minor thing to you, but that's actually probably the number one reason that a person gets a battery and it's dead on arrival. It doesn't work. Because during shipping, as things getting jostled around, a lot of times you'll have some of these little ports or, or you know wiring unplug and then the battery doesn't work. Um, so having all this glue in place on all these connectors is, is, a, is more for quality control, right? It's gonna, it's gonna help it be able to ship and get, take those vibrations from traveling in a truck and help keep those connectors from ever coming out on their own. So I've got two of these previous version batteries and I've had them hooked up to the 12K PV hybrid inverter. They have work, been working perfectly fine for me. Uh, one of the complaints I know that some people say, I've heard, I've seen this in videos, people say that the hand, they don't have any handles. Well, they, they do have handles. It's got handles right here. They come separate in the box and then you, and with some screws and then you have to attach them to the side of here. Every one I've got, so the total of three now, they all have handles. Um, so I'm not sure why some people didn't get them or they didn't think they got them. But uh, in my experience, they, they do come with handles. The only downside of this battery that I have is that it's actually fairly long. All right. So the case is 20 and a half inches long. And most of my other server rack batteries, I think they're closer to 18, 18 and a half inches long. So this is a couple inches longer than most other batteries. And the, and the problem I have with that is it actually doesn't fit in my server rack cabinet. It actually hits the back of the cabinet and can't go in completely. So if you guys are looking to use these as a budget battery in your build, you, instead of buying a server rack cabinet, you might look at the, the racking system that they EcoWorthy makes uh, for these to sit in. It's more of an open rack, and then you don't have to worry about it hitting like the back of the cabinet. These EcoWorthy batteries, they use a JBD BMS and you can download the app on your phone and then it'll find it with Bluetooth and then you can go ahead and connect to it. You can program it to your Wi-Fi so you can monitor it um, from anywhere if you wanna do that. So when the app comes up, you can see that it's 100% state of charge. You can see the discharge, you know, all your different information is in here, but there is an, an area for parameters and then you can set up uh, I believe the inverter protocol, this is how you set up your communication, but you can go in here for CAN protocol. I've already got it selected for LXP, which is Lux power. But if we scroll down through here, you can see Pylon, GrowWatt, Goodwe, you got Victron, you got Voltronic, you got all these different um, communication protocols that it can talk with on CAN bus. And then when we go to RS-485, you have a similar list that is full of all different types of inverters that this can communicate with. So it's very compatible, can be used with several different other brands of products. So overall, my experience with the EcoWorthy server rack batteries has been good. Uh, like I said, my only real complaint is that the, they don't fit in my server rack cabinet, so I'm gonna end up having to come up with a, a new mounting system to, to put these batteries in. Another downside to these batteries is they aren't UL listed and then they they don't have fire suppressors on the inside and most batter, most budget batteries that's the way it is if you if you want those uh, features you're normally going to have to pay a few hundred dollars extra to get them so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to add this battery to the rest of my battery bank and i'm going to test it over time if i have any issues with it i'll share it with you guys uh, but if you guys are interested in one of these eco worthy server rack batteries i definitely if they're the same price i'd definitely be going for the newer version. It definitely has some better quality control issues in here, better hold downs, and it's, it looks like the exact same quality as the previous version. But I, if you guys are interested, I'll leave links down in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.